Creating a schedule using Schneider Electric's Structureware, John Hardesty is going to take a look at that and build that for us. Take it away, John. Okay, today I'm going to show you how to create a schedule in Schneider Structureware version 1.81. First thing you want to do on your Windows machine is start the building operation workstation version 1.8 and you'll see I already have it installed on my laptop here so all I need to do is click the icon to start it. Once the software starts it will ask you to input your username. It is case sensitive so be careful there and your password which is also case sensitive. Don't forget to fill in your IP address of your AS controller in the field and then click the log on button. Now we're logged into our system. You can see my Dallas, my site is called Dallas ES and under that Dallas ES I have a folder for servers and I have two servers on my system. Normally we would create a folder under one of these servers wherever the piece of equipment is that we need to control with this schedule. For this demonstration, I'm going to create my own folder. And I've already created a folder called Schedules here. And I'm going to click on that Schedules folder. And then over here on the right hand side of the screen, you'll notice it's blank. This is where I want to create my schedule. So I'm going to right click on this side and say New and select Schedule. It's close to the bottom down here. And when I do it, ask you to choose the type of schedule and the name for the schedule. There are mul multiple types of schedules that you can select. Uh, analog schedule, calendar for holidays and such. We're interested in a digital schedule because we want to turn the piece of equipment either on or off. So I'm going to call this digital schedule test and select the create button. And you'll notice now there's a schedule listed in my folder here. To open this schedule, just double click on it and it'll take you to the schedule view. This schedule is blank when we first create it, so we're going to have to add a business time or a start and stop time to this schedule. <clears throat> to do that, we're going to click the green arrow up in the left hand corner that says new schedule event. When I click on that, the event type I want to select is weekly. Over here on the right hand side, the days of the week that I would like this schedule to apply to, select those. It automatically defaults to Monday through Friday for you. It automatically defaults to 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. for your start and your end time. But I want to change those. We start at 7 a.m. So I'm going to go down here and change the start time to 7 a.m. The end time I will leave at 5 p.m. And the value is I want the schedule to be on during that time frame. You notice it turned this box red over here and it said the entry must be in the proper format. So let's type that in properly. It should be 7.00 a.m. Type just like that. I select it on and select OK. Now you'll see it automatically enters into your schedule Monday through Friday. 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. on your schedule. This is automatically applied to every day of the week for the rest of the calendar for the rest of eternity. So I can move from week to week by selecting these buttons in the upper right hand corner. By selecting the forward button I can move forward a week or I can move back a week. And you'll notice the start and stop times are the same on every week. Don't forget to save it after you put your start and stop times in there, otherwise you'll lose everything. Now let's say we have a special day that we don't want it to start and stop at 7 to 5, like a July 4th. We want the unit to be off all day long. I'll have to make an exception to that one day to this schedule. So again, click on the plus in the upper left hand corner. 
This time the event type we'll select is exception. Once you select exception, the screen changes. You can select the except, exception type over here in the right hand side. Your options are single date for a single date like July 4th or a date range. If you had a year, excuse me, a week off, you could select a date range from the 4th to the 6th or a calculated date like Thanksgiving, which is the last Thursday of November, or you could select a holiday calendar. So after we've selected exception, we selected a single date, we want to put our start and stop times on here. In this case, we want the unit to be off all day long, so I'm going to select all day. And it automatically fills in 12 a.m. to 12 midnight. Don't forget to change your value of what you want the schedule to do during this time period. We want the schedule to be off all day long. Down at the bottom of the screen, we want to name this event. I'm going to call it July 4th. Priority 16, we're going to leave it 16. The year is 2017. The month is July. Type in July. The day of the month is 4. And it can be any day during the week, any day of the week, so we'll leave it like that. Select OK. And you'll notice in my calendar over here, July 4th is highlighted in a light gray color. That means it's an exception to the schedule, to the daily schedule. If I go down and I select that week by clicking on the calendar here, you'll notice Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday all remain 7 to 5, but on Tuesday it's going to be off all day long. This will only happen on July 4th of 2017. This will not carry forward every year after year after year. So if you need to put this in every year, you will have to move forward a year and add it for July 4th of 2018, 2019, and so forth. There's an easier way to do this with calendars, but we'll save that for another video. Don't forget to save after you're done and you've complete with your schedule. We can close the schedule or move on to the rooftop unit folder. <coughs> the schedule will need to turn on and off a schedule point that will be used to trigger the air handlers or the pumps or whatever you're using it for. I've created a folder called Rooftop Unit Folder. In there I have an occupied software point that I'm going to attach this schedule to. The way that you have this schedule control this point is you right click on it, go to Edit Bindings, and then over here on the right hand side we'll want to go back on the object tree until we see our folder called Schedules select the folder we created called schedules and under that folder you'll see that new schedule that I created. You want to highlight that schedule with your mouse by clicking on it, dragging it over to this box here and dropping it in that box. Now whenever this schedule comes on it will turn on my occupied point. Again don't forget to save and you'll notice if I go to the properties of this occupied point it's true because it's between 7 a.m. and 5 p.m. Whatever pieces of equipment you have attached to this occupied point, it will turn on and off according to your schedule.